Okay, let's talk about Maryland bridges. There's a place for them. I don't like Maryland bridges in the posterior part of the mouth and in the maxillary anterior. They can be useful so long as the lower teeth are not contacting the Maryland bridge, which is an issue in eccentric movements. You can take it out of occlusion in centric relation occlusion, but in eccentric movements, it's hard for the lower anterior teeth not to contact a Maryland bridge, say replacing lateral incisors. The perfect spot for a Maryland bridge is when a person is missing a lower incisor. Now I'm gonna show a couple of cases in the forthcoming months where I've taken out all four uh, lower incisors and replacing them and grafted the areas and then replacing them with a four unit implant supported bridge. But if the patient's not ready to do that, if these other teeth are decent, then you may want to place a Maryland bridge and that's perfect. Why do I like a Maryland bridge in those cases? I never like to prepare a lower incisor, central or lateral, for a full crown because they're such small teeth. If you prepare them for a full crown, you remove most of the tooth or a large portion of the tooth and they're very likely to fracture or need endodontics. So a Maryland bridge to me is just perfect in those situations. You can see this guy needs a good cleaning and he's missing that tooth and this is the before and after. So this was, this was a tricky case. You can see the lower left lateral incisor was abscessed. The lower left central incisor was missing. So here's the lower left lateral, lower left central, lower right central, and it was fine. So the first thing we had to do was do endodontics on the lower left lateral, which is gonna clear up that infection. You can see some of my sealer is out, so I'm out in the infected area. And so I know I cleaned it up cleaned it out and filled it all the way to the apex. Local anesthesia, you can look up that. And this is a Brazilier, just a thin, coarse diamond. And what I want is I want the interproximal to draw. I'm only prepping through the interproximal. I'm not prepping onto the facial. And then I'm gonna prep onto the lingual with a coarse football diamond just on the lingual of these two teeth and the interproximal and, and then just barely place it on the incisal. The main thing we want here is we want it to draw. We want those two to draw. And you want to be sure there's it's not a real tight fit because the thing that's going to hold the bridge on the teeth is the bond. It's not the it's not the tight draw of the preps. Now I'm prepping the lingual. It's a simple preparation with a coarse football diamond. You always want that surface to be concave, not convex. <coughs> so just make this concave. I'm not doing much preparation at all. I don't care if that's a little bit bulky on the lingual. I'm not trying to prep. I don't want to prep through the enamel because as you know, you have greater bond strength when you're bonding to enamel than when you're bonding to dentin. So I want to keep the preps in enamel and we're prepping the lingual and the interproximal and be sure these interproximals will draw. You'd rather over prep a little bit than under prep. You want to be sure it's the bridge fits on there easily. Just removing a little, just freshening that surface is actually all we're doing. So here and here. Slight touch around the line angles. Now I'm creating a little stop on the lingual, so it's not just a ski slope. I want a little slot and I'm using a round burr to just create a little ledge on the lingual so the bridge will stop when I'm seating it. 
much like the stops on bicuspid teeth when I'm prepping veneers. See, again, just a little ledge on that lingual so it's got to stop. So see, we've got plenty of draw here, no problem. Since it's not in the aesthetic zone, I'm not worried about creating a gingival pontic receptor site like I would in the anterior region because that's in the aesthetic zone. I want that pontic to look like it grew out of, the, out of the gingival tissue, out of a socket. This one, I'm not concerned about that. So we're going to take a polyether with custom tray impression, the wash material, rinse the teeth real well. Remember, polyether loves water, so a wet tooth is fine. Polyvinylsiloxane does not like water. It's hydro, hydrophobic, but polyether is hydrophilic. So you can wet the teeth and rinse them off really well. Be sure there's nothing, no dried blood or anything in the gingival uh, sulcus. And we place this blockout material on the posterior teeth and wet them. And I'm not squirting any wash material on the teeth. I'm just using the wash material in the impression. And just deadly accurate. Then this is a reversible hydrocolloid impression. This is probably the most, according to the studies, this and the polyether are the most accurate of all. Probably the reversible hydrocolloid is the most accurate because it doesn't stretch when you take it out of the mouth. Now probably most of you don't know anything about this impression material. It's called reversible hydrocolloid. You've got to have certain trays that have channels in them and you, it, the, wa the cool water just tap water runs through the tray and as the tray cools the impression material sets up so it goes on dead soft and then sets up sets up and when you take it out of the mouth it doesn't drag or stretch so it's killer killer accurate so I always take at least one reversible hydrocolloid and if we've got two or more preps or a bridge I take a polyether with custom tray if we're doing just a single crown I take two reversible hydrocolloid impressions. I always take two, kind of like having two parachutes. If something went wrong with the first one, which you, you can't imagine what it might be, and I don't remember the last time that happened, you've got a backup. So these are real cheap impressions too. They cost about a dollar an impression once you get the trays and see it's just deadly accurate. Crisp, clean margins. Taking a polyvinyl siloxane occlusal registration record. So this is a Emax lithium desilicate to zirconium. The, the framework is zirconium and the, the veneered part is Emax or lithium desilicate. Now notice right here, this is something I do on all my bridges. I want the lingual or the palatal aspect of the bridge to be flat. Don't make big sluice ways or interproximal areas on the lingual because it's not in an aesthetic zone that people can see anyway and it's just a food trap. So on the lingual make this flat. They can get floss underneath there and clean it but they're not trapping food. We add a little bit to the incisal to even out the edges or the incisal plane. So I'm cleaning. You can look at our link on how to treat zirconium prior to seeding. I just cleaned it with alcohol, then this is how to treat zirconium. Then I wipe the teeth with isopropyl alcohol on a cotton ball first, and then I'm wiping it with uh, tubelicid red, and then we're going to etch it here in a moment, just to be sure everything is nice and clean. And then this is just 38% phosphoric acid. Now, what do you seat this with? What kind of cement do you seat it with? Well, you could seat it with Unisim, just a normal crown and bridge cement. I'm seating it with Rely X veneer looting composite because I'm going to cure through the tooth and through the restoration. So I'm sure it's completely cured. Then rinse that off. I'm going to cure. I'm going to etch it for about a minute since the prep is all in enamel. Now, if it was partly in dentin, you only etch the dentin, as with the veneer, for about 15 seconds. I'm going to etch it for a minute, then rinse it off thoroughly. This is a great carrier. 
This is just a red rope wax on a cotton tip applicator. Then I'm placing my Scotch Bond Universal Primer Adhesive on the retainer parts of the Maryland Bridge. Be sure you blow all that off because what you're blow you want to blow it off because there's acetone, an acetone carrier in that primer adhesive. You want to get rid of that or that can weaken the bond. So blow everything off till nothing wiggles on the tooth. Always do that anytime you're using primer adhesive for direct composite, veneers, whatever. Then I'm doing the same thing on the teeth after I've etched them. I'm isolating with a two by two so the patient doesn't breathe with moist their moist air on that. Then I'm gonna blow that off onto a two by two and put that two by two right by the area where you're blowing so you don't blow it all over the tongue and the gingival tissue. And blow that off until nothing wiggles. Don't ever leave it on there bulky. Then I'm gonna floss and I'm placing the Rely X veneer looting composite on the retainer retainers of the Maryland Bridge. And see, we've got some stops here. We've got the incisal stops. And then you remember, I cut those little trenches in the lingual part of the preparation so that this doesn't just keep sliding down. It's got stops on the incisal and the lingual. I want it to seat decisively. Just push it. I'm not trying to remove all of that looting composite because I want to remove the line share, most of it in that micro gap after it's set or has initial set anyway. Then I'm going to cure it for just a second on the lingual and the facial just to get initial set of the material, not a full set, just initial set. So I can, well, I can break it off or scrape it off. I don't want to wipe it off because if you wipe it off, you're going to pull some of it out of the micro gap between the restoration and the tooth. You're going to have some suck back. So you want to scrape it off or wipe it off. You don't want to, I mean, you don't want to wipe it off in the unset mode, you want it to have initial set before you remove it from the micro gap. This is the back edge of a scaler and flossing. Then once I've done that, I'm going to come back and cure it 60 seconds on the front and the back of each retainer. And that whole, rest, whole tooth is just going to light up so you know you've cured it all the way through. Then this is a fine, smooth, uh, uh, flame shaped diamond and then this is just a Brazilier uh, 12 fluted carbide burr with lots of water just light touch so that 12 fluted on the lingual and the interproximal to be sure all the excess is removed. Then this is the square end of an amalgam carver for removing any looting composite on the facial surface. This is a Shofu gray rubber wheel for a final polish. Then this is a floss threader with wax floss with a knot in it. And I want to be sure all the Excess looting composite is removed around the ponic area. Okay. Remember, you never want the four anterior teeth to contact first in centric relation occlusion, or it can distalize the condyle onto the retrodiscal tissue and give the patient a TMJ problem or myofascial pain. You don't ever want the four anterior teeth to contact first. You always want to be able to pull shim stock through but when the patient bites down hard between the four anterior teeth 
to know that they're not contacting first. Okay, here we have it. And this is nice and flat so they don't catch food debris. Like I said, I'm not a real fan of Maryland bridges, but this is a good indication for them. The best indication, lower, a missing lower anterior tooth. If the other lower anterior teeth, lower incisors are in reasonably good shape, you know, that, that's a lot better than a full coverage bridge because you're not reducing the tooth significantly. There's such little teeth you don't want to, uh, I'd hate to say never, but you almost never want to place a crown on a lower central or lateral incisor. So this is a, a good restoration if you're missing a single lower incisor. So that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.